Okay, guys, let me uh, give you the update after yesterday's uh, poor performance with the battery runtime. We had the stock 7 amp hour size, not the stock batteries, but they were 7 amp hour. And there's a bunch of things going on that I'll talk about, but we had really bad runtime. It wasn't really a surprise. We've got four motors on this thing. So, what we've done is We've started looking around, we've got the seat out, and here's a couple different scenarios what you guys can do to upgrade your batteries. We're gonna use 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries right now. So as you can see, you can get one under each seat compartment there. So you can relocate your batteries back here and have 12 amp hours, which is almost 100% increase in capacity and we were hoping that these guys were big enough to put an 18 amp hour pack but as you can see it just isn't going to fit and there's these little uh, raised areas you can't cut that because that's actually where the rear um, swing arm mounts because this has the rear suspension so you can't hack those and the seat really needs to have um, an area where it slides right over this. Knees are pushing it. So that's one area. We didn't really want to have to run wiring all the way back there right now. I mean, not a big deal. But what we did is the stock area, all it had was two little tabs. I had to take a picture I'll put right here. And we literally just took a sharp chisel and cut it out. Uh, see one. So this is all it was. This is the only thing that was holding us back from putting a wider battery in there. It was just a divider. So that's where we're going to put one 12 amp hour battery. Well, this is a 24 volt system, but if you look over here, the lighting's poor, I know. Uh, let me get the flashlight on here. So what we've got is another area over there. So what we did is we didn't have to do any cutting here but what we did is we are going to put a piece of this uh, rubber mat down it's just foam mat and now we can slide a battery in here and then you can see what we've got left so this one goes in first and what we did is we made up this cardboard template and we were able to take the measurements so it's just going to be a battery hold down and what we did is we just cut it to length and then we bent it in our vise pretty easy. what we used was this one inch aluminum bar stock and then when we had it all bent up with our 90s we just wrapped it with electrical tape that's really gonna um, basically just help so it doesn't short out if we accidentally touch a couple motor leads um, shouldn't really happen so that's gonna go in there like this at the bottom um, we're just gonna use a screw and then through the side panel, what we did is we popped out the fake shock and we are just, get it out here. We're just using a little, a little tiny bolt. So we're going to feed that through. Oh, and here's a tip guys. Be careful uh, when you pop this out. The top one's just got a friction fit little tab, but the bottom one actually has a 90 degree uh, tongue on it and that can easily get broken. So be careful when you pop that out. Uh, so that's gonna fasten that battery totally in. Just like that, grab the next battery and it will fit right in the stock location, like so. And we will use the stock 
battery hold down because a 12 amp hour battery is the exact same height as a 7 amp hour. So now we've got almost 100% longer run time, give or take. I'll do the math later. Um, so it's going to work out real good. It's the exact same battery connections. One connector for one battery, the other connector for the other battery, and you're in business. So this will actually help boost performance too. People don't think about this, but um, these little batteries right here, when you place a load on them, there's a, I guess you'd call it a scientific term is sag. So um, we're gonna do a little demo and show you guys when you're having a, a major draw on a battery, it's going to sag down in voltage. And what was happening is this thing was stuttering and he couldn't even get it back to the, uh, the shop here. We actually had to get a tow. So, um, yeah, it just wasn't going to work. That 10, 15 minutes we had with those teeny tiny little batteries plus four motors. Um, so for right now, we're going to run with the two Mighty Maxes under the bonnet here. And if that's not enough, we can always parallel these two here. So that will be 24 amp hours. So um, that's where we're at today, guys. All right. Okay, since we're talking about batteries, I actually found an observation while I was charging these 12 amp hour batteries with this Schumacher Charge and Ride charger. So I clipped it on and it charged up for a while and it said solid green. And that means that it's fully charged. I tested it with a voltmeter here and it was at like 12.89, 12.9 which is pretty close to being full, but that's not a completely full battery. Uh, from my experience, 13.2 is a fully topped off battery, uh, SLA battery. So what I did is I came over and I plugged it into my all time favorite charger. This is an Optima charger. Um, I'm gonna do a product review on this one too, but it, it has a couple negatives because it's only a, a 12 volt charger, not a six volt. But anyways, so I immediately brought the battery over here, clipped it on, and it started charging and it goes through a process um these all algorithms or something fancy i don't know and it's telling me that it's only at 75 percent and it's putting out 15.7 volts right now so it's charging this battery after this one thought it was charged and i suspect that the issue is this is charging at three amps so that's putting in quite a bit of uh, amperage into this battery, not volts, but amps. And the guideline is 20% of the capacity. It's easy math. It's um, 2.4 is the max that they say is safe. So I think that it just charged it up too fast and it said, hey, I'm full. Basically, it, it just didn't have time to saturate the uh, lead plates in there. This one, I believe that it goes through all these different phases. Um, it's pretty high tech. I mean, Optima makes the some bad stuff out there. So I just wanted to point this out that, yes, I still like this charger. I love how it comes with three connectors, and I use uh, these alligator clips um, to balance charge them. And... So that's it guys. So this is going to get me um, up and running. And once this is at 100% and it has a resting voltage, I will finish this video and hopefully get it uploaded today. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. I came back and I checked the old Optima charger. And guess what? It's at 100%. It says 13.2 volts. So... When I'm checking it with the old voltmeter. So it's obviously not charging, so that's a smart charger type thing, and it's at 13.9. And this is a cheapy Harbor Freight thing, so maybe I should uh, put another one on, but just shows you guys that that uh, Schumacher said it was full, but it still had some more capacity in it. It was just trying to pump it in too fast. So little FYI guys 
Okay, so I actually noticed something. I've never actually looked real close at this. Hopefully, good, it zooms in on that. Um, so this Optima is telling me that it's charging this 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery at 14.8 volts at 0.4 amps. So it's not even half of an amp. So it's gently easing voltage into this. Um, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of science behind this, but I wanted to just clarify that fast chargers aren't the best thing for sealed lead acid batteries. All right, guys, so here's the finished product. This is what it's going to look like if you put two 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries in your best choice, big country or whatever it is, big toys, green country. Man, that's a mouthful for me. But anyways, oh, we got almost 100% runtime extension over the seven amp hours. And we're going to put this all back together and give it a test drive.